Hi guys, welcome back to Running Shoes Guru. My name's Brandon and today I'm reviewing the latest Super Shoe Rocket, the New Balance RC Elite V2. The RC Elite V1 was launched in September 2020 and I really liked its soft cushioned midsole which made long distances really comfortable and enjoyable. It was also the best gripping road shoe I've ever tested because of its Dynaride outsole. Now the RC Elite was a good racing shoe but I found its plate wasn't prominent enough and it didn't provide as much propulsion as other super shoes. Only eight months later, the RC Elite V2 was launched. Its Dynaride outsole has been replaced with a soft, flat, blown rubber outsole and its midsole stack height has also been increased. It's now 39mm in the heel, 31mm in the forefoot, compared to 32, 22 in the first version. So its drop has been decreased from 10mm to 8mm. It now weighs 7.7 .7 ounces, which is 0.4 ounces heavier than the first version, but it still costs 225 US dollars. So can the new revamped New Balance flagship racer now compete with the fastest super shoes? And how does it compare to the first version? When I tried it on for the first time, I could immediately feel the increase in cushioning. It felt a lot plusher and squishier underfoot. My first run was a 17 km fartlek and the most striking thing was how much smoother the RC Elite V2 felt than the first version. The Dynaride outsole on the first version made the forefoot feel a bit bumpy because of the small spikes. But with the smooth sheet of blown rubber, transitions feel much better. The steeper carbon fiber plates also felt more prominent than in the first version. That first run felt really effortless, bouncy and exciting. The midsole of the RC Elite V2 is now even softer and more cushioned than version 1. And it still has the softest ride of all the super shoes. I really enjoy it on long distance runs because the cushioning feels bottomless and it doesn't feel like my foot is sinking down into the foam too much. Even at slower speeds above 5 minutes 30 per kilometer, the midsole feels cushioned, stable and lively. The carbon fiber plate in the midsole is the same rigidity as the first version, but it now has a steeper slope which can be done because of the thicker midsole. It definitely feels a lot more prominent than the first version, but it still doesn't feel as propulsive as the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent or the A6 Metaspeed Sky. The other difference in the midsole geometry is that the RC Elite V2 now has a higher toe spring, which increases the rocker effect. I felt that the shoe was more energy saving and more efficient during long runs. I really liked the unique spiky Dynaride outsole on the first version, but in the RC Elite V2, I don't really miss it. I found the level of traction to be slightly lower, but I prefer the smoother ride transitions. The smoother ride makes it feel far more silky and more enjoyable over long distances. The rear foot rubber placement of the outsole has also been changed to a design of two vertical rubber strips similar to the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. The problem is that these rubber strips don't wrap up around the edges of the midsole, so the overhanging foam gets scuffed by the ground. The upper of the RC Elite V2 is not your typical snug racing foot upper. It's accommodating, roomy, and it fits more like a training shoe than a racing shoe, which makes it a lot more comfortable over long distances. The upper mesh has been changed to a stretchy knitted material, which is not as furry as on the first version. And this leads to better breathability because it's thinner, 
and there are now big holes on top of the tow box to let the air in. This knitted material is also thinner than other knitted uppers, so it doesn't absorb much liquid and it won't increase the weight of the shoe during races. The tongue is a little bit longer than on the first version, but it's still flat, wide and ungusseted, so it did slide downwards during runs. The collar and the heel tab are lightly padded and I experienced excellent foot lockdown with no heel slippage. Although I did have to use a runner's knot to get a good foot lockdown. The fit is true to size with the length being a little bit shorter than the average running shoe. I thought about going down a half size but I'm glad I didn't because the forefoot would have been too roomy. Version 2 is a big improvement over the RC Elite V1. It's now more cushioned because of its thicker midsole, its ride is smoother because of its flat outsole and it feels more efficient over long distances because of the higher toe spring. The RC Elite V2 is a lot more forgiving than other carbon fiber shoes and its ride is also less jarring so I don't mind doing training in it. I also find that I experience less calf stiffness than other carbon fiber shoes after doing long runs in it because its ride is more natural. It wouldn't be my first choice to race a marathon in because its ride still isn't as propulsive as other super shoes like the Nike Vaporfly Next% Percent or the A6 Metaspeed Sky. If you're a runner who prefers a high level of cushioning and a bouncy ride over a prominent propulsive carbon plate then the RC Elite V2 is the super shoe for you. Thanks for watching the review right until the end. You can also read the full written review on Running Shoes Guru. Please do us a favor and like the video and subscribe to Running Shoes Guru.